Hey there, everyone. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. All right, so today we're going to be talking about Wings of a New Company by J.L. Uh, thank you, Simon Schuster, for sending me a copy of this book. I loved it. Now, the first line, you know, I love really good opening lines. And right here, obviously, you saw the cover. She is an African-American person. She's a person of color. You know, she is our main protagonist. So when you have, when you're already acknowledging, you know, this is a story that is going to be about people of color. And then you have an opening line such as bullets don't have lame, don't have names. That's a really strong opening line. You already have an idea of the direction that the author is going to take the story. Now, her name is Rue. She grew up on East Row. You know, it's not a really, there's a lot, there's a strong gang presence there. Her mother was shot on their doorstep. So you already know that this novel is kind of going to be dealing with um, racial injustice. And you really don't see it a lot in the beginning because, sorry, my cats. <laughs> she, um, she's uprooted, you know, she's uprooted by the father she's never known and taken to this mystical land of Gazan. Um, now, Gazan, magical, full of a lot of white people. In fact, her and her father are the only African American um, people of color in this mystical land. And she only has one good friend. You know, she's a smart girl, she's clever, she's a genius. And she pretty much helps Rue get back home to visit her sister a year later because she's been gone for a year. And she goes to visit her sister on the day their mother died. And just to leave her present, you know, one of the rules of Gazan, you cannot go to the mortal realm and you cannot be seen. She goes to the mortal realm, she breaks rule one, she gets seen, she breaks rule two, she gets... She saves her sister's life from um, a train wreck using magic. So that's rule three. So she breaks a lot of rules and her skin color is already putting her at odds, you know, with the general who's, he's just so racist. He is mm, so racist. And her friend is also unwittingly um, racist, but you don't see that until halfway through the book when Rue is flashbacking and she's trying to master a spell and she masters it and her friend was having a lot of trouble and when her friend ma masters it, Rue asked her, you know, how'd you do that? She's like, well, if you could do it, I could do it. You know, you kind of see um, the racism there and I don't think her friend actually sees it herself because, you know, there have never been people of color in this society. It's whitewashed. It is so whitewashed. It's just white, gray, pale people. Later, we discover, you know, they stole their magic. The only people who rightfully have the magic are the small tribe, the remnants of, um, I'm trying to think of the right words here the remnants of the original magic users and they are all people of color so these white people stole their magic hmm why does that sound so familiar so I really did appreciate the message in the story about racial inequality um Rue also discovers you know there's so much racial injustice um, white people are abusing um, the African Americans in her town. They are trying to force, you know, they are using um, African pe people of color as drug runners while they sit back and take no blame. It's like, oh, well, if you get caught, who, if you get caught, who cares? And so Rue is kind of fighting a war on two fronts. Back home, she's trying to save her sister's life because part of the Gazan code is of New Gazan is we have to kill anyone who sees you. That includes her sister because she saved her sister's life. 
So she's fighting a war there, and then she's kind of fighting the war at home, in her new home as well. <coughs> Sorry. So there's so much in this novel. It's such a strong, powerful message of social injustice and racial injustice, and it really does resonate with the reader. You don't have to be a person of color to really appreciate the message in this story. You just have to be aware of your privilege. You know, I'm 100% Hispanic, but I don't think you would know it to look at me because I'm just so light-skinned. And I am not oblivious to my white privilege. Um, it's unfortunate um, because there are African Americans out there who are like 10 times smarter than me. I went to school with a few of them, and, you know, I know a lot of them had trouble with, you know, college and stuff, and I love it whenever I read in the news, you know, African Americans are, you know, valedictorians, and they get full rides to these really prestigious colleges. I think it's great that it's making the news. I just think it's unfortunate that um, society wants to call these people, oh, well, you're just trying to be white. No, I don't, I don't agree with that sentiment at all. I think it's more of like Rue, like Rue. I mean, she's not trying to be anyone other than herself. She is showcasing her strength in her culture because she finally finds the magic within, it, within her when she connects back to her roots and her culture. And I think that's great. I don't think anyone has the right to take that away from any person. Um, so I really, really did like the message and the characterization. And I think Rue is such a strong, she is slightly abrasive. I will say that. She is slightly abrasive, but given everything that's happened to her, I love the movement of the story, how she reminisces. It doesn't disrupt the pacing of the story. Let me just say that. Because sometimes when characters have flashbacks, you're just like, whoa, okay, so we're going into a flashback now. Okay. It kind of does t um, take away from the pacing if the author doesn't write it correctly. JL, she did, or they did. Sorry. Let's kind of stick to um, they pronouns. She, they, they did an amazing job with the pacing and just making sure that the story and the narrative flowed. So you really do get a really nice, well-rounded scope of who Rue is as a character and everything she's gone through in the past year and everything she's gone through in her life and just everything she is facing in her society. And I think it's really empowering that she faces it head on. And she challenges the social injustice. And she says, no, you aren't. Pardon me. She's like, no, you're not going to put me down for the color of my skin. She rises to the occasion repeatedly. And she takes empowerment in her skin color. She takes empowerment in the origins of her roots. And I found that to be really thoughtful and impactful and emotional and it is so relevant to today's society. I've said this before. I once had a teacher who said genre fiction is not real fiction. You know, what am I creating? Creative writing teacher said that to me in college. Yes, she, she was a privileged old white woman. Surprise, surprise. Um, she's like, I don't read genre fiction. So I don't want you writing it. That's the thing. I think if you're going to tell a good story, it doesn't matter what kind of genre. And I always thought it was stupid. Like everything's part of a genre. Like how can you, it's like, it's either fiction or it's science fiction or it's fantasy. It's like, so basically she just writes fiction. So she just wants you to write contemporary realistic fiction, which I think is, hmm. I always thought that was a slap in the face because it's like, that's not what I want to write. 
Um, I don't really read. I do read more of it now, but that at that time I was really only science fiction and fantasy. That's that's all I read. I never really read contemporary and realistic fiction. Um, but you know, I will say this: if you're a good writer, you can write anything. However, if you're going to be a good teacher, you need to be open and aware of anything because a good writer can write anything and a good writer can translate their message through any medium even if it is genre fiction this is young adult fantasy it has realism to it but if you were going to categorize it it would be young adult well let's see this is an arc and usually arcs will give you the um genre that they're gonna go for no it didn't but come on it's teen fiction young adult fantasy magic it's a genre fiction and it has an important message and i think a good writer can translate a really strong message to the reader and make an impact the way jl did with her storytelling and characterization. That's what I found really empowering about this story. How it resonated with me as a reader. I was blown away by it. Now, I did have some hiccups near the ending, that kind of romance at the end. I First of all, I didn't think it was necessary to the story. It kind of came out of nowhere. This dude keeps calling her um, his queen, like, yeah, that's great. Everyone wants to be called a queen. Um, but <laughs> I think it was unnecessary to the story. Um, and it was a little rushed. So it did feel, it didn't really fit with everything else that was going on in the story. I really don't think it was necessary overall. That is the only thing I have an issue with. Other than that, you know, the ending does leave off on kind of a cliffhanger she's gonna go stop the colonizers again and save the last remnants of her tribe and that's how it ends and I was just like what but I think it leaves off on that because I think we all know she's gonna kick all kinds of ass let's face it she's gonna kick ass she's pretty awesome so I mean wings of ebony by JL. Four, four and a half out of five stars. I can't quite give it that five star ranking because of that hiccup at the ending with that romance. I didn't think it was necessary. Um, it didn't really build and it didn't add anything to the story. So four, four and a half. I think I'll go ahead and give it four and a half. I definitely recommend purchasing this book. It's great for discussion. It's great for reading. It has such good pacing and it moves so fluidly it's such it's a well-written story and I ultimately loved it so um, I will include a link to purchase the book in the description below if money is tight or if you're a little hesitant please check it out from your local library and you know what if you end up liking it please purchase the book to support the author and then you know write your own reviews spread the word definitely a great book now, on that note, I hope you all will continue to support me by liking Sin's Workshop and subscribing to my channel. Please do not forget to share this with your fellow book lovers. Hope you all have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.